Okay, everybody. Just want to make sure that cell phones are off. Yes, yes, yes. Cell phones are off. Turn off. Put in your pockets. Yeah, all your hands, feet, arms. Cell phones off and in your pockets. I will allow for if your Bible is on your phone, but I reserve the right of show me at any time. Okay? All right. Let's go to the Lord in prayer before we dig into His Word. All right, let's pray. Dear Lord, I thank you for this time that we could just come together again as a youth group and worship you. I thank you for the good time that we had in games. I thank you for uh, Danny and the rest of the worship team just uh, leading worship for us so we can just worship you in song. I pray now that we, as we come into your word that we'll just look at it honestly as it really is, that we'll see how we can apply it to our lives. I pray that as I teach, that you'll help me to teach as I can, as I, if I will never teach again as a dying man to dying men and women, that uh, I will teach with urgency, knowing that we only have a certain amount of time, days that are fixed on the earth. I pray that you'll help me teach and not take the blade off your word, but just let it cut into all of our lives and hit us right where, we at, where we're at. I pray that uh, we'll all be convicted and go home with something that we can put directly into practice. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay. Uh, I'm going to give you a little preface. My message tonight is not to the atheist. It's not to the agnostic. It's not to wicked people who hate God, say that they hate God. It's not to those who persecute the church and make fun of Christians. It's not to, it, it's not to people who hate us. It's not to people who are saying, I hate God and I want nothing to do with Him. It's to the people right here in this room, right where we are, okay? Those, most people in America, in most churches, even in this room, will claim to be Christian. Okay? Tonight the message is to those who claim that Jesus Christ is Lord. Right? Those who acknowledge Jesus Christ is Lord, Lord. But are we really Christians? That's the title of tonight's message is Examine Yourself. And the whole point of tonight... How do you know that you're truly saved? I just know because I know that I know that I know. <laughs> Proverbs 14, 12, there's a, and 16, 25, there's a way that seems right to a man, but its end is death. Well, I just know in my heart, or even deeper, I know in my heart of hearts. Jeremiah 17, 9, the heart is deceitful above all things, desperately sick, and cannot be understood. So when it comes down to the most important test that we are ever going to take, do we really want to trust a mind that can be deceived and a heart that can be wicked? Something we have to understand, we are a product of our environment, whether we want to acknowledge that or not. Okay? We've been born into a certain place, a certain time, a certain culture, a certain country. We are contemporary. Look around. We are Americans. You can see it. We are the modern age. What's different about us? Uh, there's a sense in which many, many people have been raised under a great deal of spiritual fraud where cliches on the back of t-shirts have more power than the preached word of God because often the Bible is not taught. Where people get their theology from songs where men assure one another because there's men assure one another of each other's salvation because they prayed a prayer in all sincerity one time and look at everyone else in their church or youth group and see that they're about the same and assume they're saved and where christian bookstores are filled with how to and self-help garbage that have no power what we want to do tonight is expose those lies and look honestly at Scripture. Look honestly at Christianity as it really is, as it's revealed in Scripture, as God's Word talks about it. Tonight, I challenge you, and I'm going to do the same. We're going to look into Scripture, and I challenge you to examine yourselves in the light of what God's Word says. Okay? Look at Scripture and see where you stand, and I'll see where I stand. Who we really are. Not who our parents think we are. Not who our friends think we are. Not who the world thinks we are. Not who the people at church think we are. Not the people at school. Who we really are. Why did I say that? Young people. 
Some people have their parents so deceived, it's ridiculous. They have no idea who their children are. And it's talking about your... I'm not talking about the one who's here now, where we're all sitting in an American church in a Christian youth group who has religious makeup on. I'm talking about the person who you know yourself to be and who God knows you to be when you are alone. When you are alone. What your actual character is. Okay? Do we look just like our youth group? Okay? Well, how do you know your youth group is saved? Right? If we compare ourselves by ourselves, we're not wise. So let's take let's get into God's word. Second Corinthians thirteen five. Test yourselves to see if you're in the faith. Examine yourselves. Or do you not recognize this about yourselves that Jesus Christ is in you, unless indeed you fail the test? Paul doesn't say well, you know you're all saved. He says, test yourselves. In the Gospel, John tells us the purpose for... Uh, in the Gospel of John, the book of John, after Luke, for Acts, <laughs> John tells us in John 20, 31, the purpose for writing his Gospel. I write this to you that you may believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and that believing in Him you may have life in His name. That's the purpose of writing his Gospel. He says in John, 1 John, his epistle, 1 John 5... 13, a major purpose for writing his epistle or letter is that so those who believe in Jesus Christ may know they have eternal life. And that's why we're studying through 1 John. It's a series of tests so that we may know whether or not we're saved. So whether tonight you see that you are saved and you're filled with joy or see that you're not saved, I want to knock out the false assurance Or give you at least assurance that you are not saved or that you are. Either way, I hope tonight, through the scripture, that you'll walk away with some sort of assurance. 1 John 2, 3 through 11. This is our passage for tonight. By this we know that we have come to know him, if we keep his commandments. The one who says, I have come to know him and does not keep his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him. But whoever keeps his word, in him the love of God has truly been perfected. By this we know that we are in him. The one who says he abides in him ought himself to walk in the same manner as he walked. Beloved, I am not writing to you, a, I am not writing a new commandment to you, but an old commandment which you have heard from the beginning. The old commandment is the word which you have heard. On the other hand, I am writing a new commandment to you, which is true in him and in you, because the darkness is passing away and the true light is already shining. The one who says he is in the light and yet hates his brother is in the darkness until now. The one who loves his brother abides in the light and there is no cause for stumbling in him. But the one who hates his brother is in the darkness and walks in darkness and does not know where he's going because the darkness is blinding his eyes. Before we get into the whole passage, I need to tell you the difference between two doctrines. Okay? The church has blend, uh, many churches have blended these two together and lost them both totally. First is the doctrine of confidence of salvation, or it could be called security of believers, or it could be called perseverance of the saints. And what that is, is every, here's the definition, every person who has truly believed in Jesus Christ has been saved. And the same power that saved that person keeps them saved forever and completely. We cannot lose our salvation. Okay? Hebrews 7.25, Therefore he, speaking of Jesus, is able to save forever those who draw near to God through him, since he always lives to make intercession for them. So Jesus intercedes for us, and that ministry is what keeps man saved. Okay? No one snatches us out of God's hands. John 10.28 and 29 All who are meant to come to God will come to Him, and by no means will Jesus cast any of them out, John 6.37. But the doctrine of assurance is this. A person is looking unto Christ and His work on the cross and His blood alone for salvation, and they can know that they're saved because God is transforming them, and they are progressively bearing good fruit toward God, and when they don't, God disciplines them and puts them back on the narrow path. That's assurance. 